Now, just in case you didn't know, in California, mathematics is racist. Did you know that? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome to the Monday edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Hard to believe the month of November is almost over. This month has just flown by. So many things going on, too, by the way, and I want to share some updates in the program. I've been looking at some news stories over the past several days, trying to think of what to share on this new program for a new week. And I'm thinking about some of what I call the the crazy stories that if you had ever said anything in a headline like I just gave you 10 years ago, 15, 20, (laughs) how about 50 years ago, people would think you're totally nuts. I mean, literally, they would call you crazy to your face. And it wouldn't matter if they're a Democrat or Republican or an independent, they would still think you're nuts. But today... We have news headlines. We have news stories that are so over the top, insanely ridiculous, just nuts. And and people think these stories are now normal. You have a significant part of the population in the United States that think it's okay. I'm looking at this story. California is now set to adopt new math teaching principles that are based in critical race theory. Now, let me just stop right there. Like I say, I've got a bunch of these little really ridiculous stories, and I've got a few, by the way, that I think are downright dangerous. You need to hear as well. So stay with the program today, please. How do you figure that mathematics is racist i mean how do you decide that mathematics somehow prefers one color of skin over another how can it do that mathematics is simply numbers it is simply something that is it is confined to the nature of the world in which we live two plus two equals five two plus two Well, to some people it does. What do you mean, Bob, it equals four? How dare you say that two plus two can't equal five? That's racist to say that. That's what it's coming down to. The truth is, mathematics in its purest form, it's either right or it's wrong. There is no wiggle room when it comes to mathematics. When you balance your checkbook, if you know how to do that, And a lot of young people today don't get it. When you balance your checkbook, you have what money you put into your account, how much you've spent, and how much you have left. You can't spend more than you have left. But see, California, the state with the largest population in the country, wants the golden state, the land of opportunity, the state that gave the nation Ronald Reagan now is has gone completely insane their government is absolutely reprobate it's insane it is delusional and people are so deceived they keep voting in reprobates they keep voting for the Nancy Pelosi's they keep voting for the Gavin Newsom's they keep voting for the sickest of the sickest individuals with nothing but malice in their heart. These politicians in California will lie to your face. They are elitist. Most of them are multi-millionaires. And they look at everybody else's commoner dirt. They've got theirs. You wear a mask. When we go to our parties, we don't have to, but you must. You must be vaccinated. And I'm going to say something. There are times that I wonder... How many of these politicians really were vaccinated or or they were getting a saline solution? I'm beginning to wonder because some stories have come out around the world that some of these leaders that are pro-vaccine are not really vaccinated themselves. Now, we'll talk about that maybe, do a little bit more investigating on it. But it would not surprise me some of the whistleblowers that have really put their lives on the line to share such a story. But getting back to the land 
How many people remember the TV program All in the Family? I shouldn't admit that I ever watched it, but back in 1972, 73, I did. And I can remember somebody saying to Archie Bunker about California, he goes, yep, the land of fruits and nuts. And, and it, you know, it didn't seem, it seemed a little bit outrageous back then because in my, I had visited California, I did several times in my working career. I can remember that I wouldn't have mind moving to California in the 1970s, even, even into the 1980s. It seemed like a great place to live and work. But as the years have gone by, as we got into the 1990s, some of that luster came off just a little bit. And I can assure you that by, by the time I last visited, oh, California, I guess it was maybe 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I would never go back. It's not a place I would want to live in. Today, with what you see in the news headlines, it's really a dangerous place to live. Crime is high. And now mathematics, somehow mathematics is just, it's just racist. They want to de-emphasize calculus and pulling programs for academically gifted students. They want to get rid of them. In other words, if you have a child in California and, and your child has got, well, he's, let's put it this way, higher IQ and gifted. Nothing to do with race, just higher IQ. They want to get rid of those programs to level the playing field to make sure that we're all at the bottom. We want people to be dumb, stupid, and gratified so they can be abused by their own government. Yeah, we'll give you the cell phone. People talk about a guaranteed income. It's fair. We need equal outcomes for everybody. And because this child over there is very smart... And he makes my child not look as good. Let's get rid of his excelled class. Instead of him taking calculus, you know, let him take just basic arithmetic. Somehow that's going to be a social justice principle in a math lesson. These guidelines do not mm, tell educators to teach critical race theory, but rather use critical race theory as their guide for the formation of all their teaching principles, including mathematics and science and any other class you can think of. History, oh yeah, you can see where that's going to go. They say critical race theory is not being taught to the students, but being taught to the teachers who then are meant to use it to formulate their own practices, their own policies, their own curriculum for their students. I can remember those days of being in school and there was a standard. But now that standard is disappearing. You know, all answers are valid. Listen, I've dealt with people, actual high school graduates in recent years that'll tell you right to your face. You'll say, look, Two plus three equals five. It doesn't equal 17. They'll say, well, that's not valid. What do you mean? Well, every all opinions are valid. All opinions are equal. All opinions should be respected. So if somebody believes that two plus five is 17, you, you must consider that valid. Now, let's see if that holds any water. If their employer decides that, Oh, I don't know, $10 an hour at 40 hours a week doesn't equal $400. It equals, you know, 219 Well, then it would be different, of course. Now, in these guidelines, there's a chapter, and it's called Teaching for Equity and Engagement. It reads, the cultural relevance is important for learning and also for expanding a collective sense of what mathematical communities <laughs> communities look and sound like to reflect California's diverse history. What in the world are they talking about? And in essence, it goes on to slam mathematics over the years, having developed in a way that has excluded many students. They say there's a huge problem with math right now. The way things are set up, it's not giving everybody a chance to learn math at the highest level. So let's just lower the standard. Because of these inequities, teachers need to work 
consciously to counter the ra- the radicalized and racialized and gendered ho ho gendered ideas about mathematical achievement. You know, California, not far from San Francisco, is Silicon Valley. This is where technology is supposed to be, you know, in vogue. And let me explain to you something. Electronic chips, electronic theory is all based on extremely high-level mathematics. If you dumb down the people, who's going to be able to write the code for your phones? Write the code or, or figure out the electronics for high-frequency communications, for digital trans, you know, transport of information. Mathematics High-level mathematics is required. Even in some of the engineering work that I do, we're still using this high level of math to figure out circuits that we now claim to too many people because of their race, their culture, gender, or other characteristics as inequitable, racist, and unfair. You know, mathematics has nothing to do with fairness. It is what it is. Two plus three equals five. 17 plus 3 equals 20. It doesn't equal a different number. It is what it is. You can't decide that, okay, I've got $300 in my checking account, and I'm going to write a check for 500 and I'm going to be mad if it bounces at the bank. Because I've re-added my deposits, and they add up, in my mind, uh, to be enough. We look at Chapter 4 of those guidelines. And it's revealed that math language routines developed by understanding language at the Stanford Center for Assessment, they're part of a basis for this new initiative. And, and of all places, a great school, or I should say increasingly formally great school, Stanford University, uh, puts this framework with the intention of helping teachers address a specialized academic language demands in math, when planning and delivering lessons to including the demanding of reading, writing, and speaking, and conversing, and representing in math. It goes on and on. Mathematics is simple. It is a science. It is the use of numbers. It is the use of formulas. It's the use of equations. And all of these things come to conclude a specific answer. If you have a terrible equation and terrible mathematics in designing a bridge, the bridge will probably fail. If you're using faulty mathematics to design an aircraft, that aircraft will probably crash. Yet we now call mathematics racist. We now want to lower the standard. Why do we want to lower the standard? nonsense in those guidelines, but let me just share the one that is <laughs> the worst of all. The new guidelines, are you ready for this, suggest that grading is not an appropriate way to judge math proficiency. In other words, correct answers shouldn't count. Mastery based on grading and getting the right answer. Wow, that's not important. It's not important to get the right answer. Like I say, do you want these Students coming out of high school and going to some woke college and then becoming an engineer designing something that your life may depend upon if the actual correct answer doesn't mean anything? What in the world are we coming to? We've got a lot of other stories I want to share, but when I hit that one, and I'm sorry that I took as long as I did on on this one, but, but we're finding this is happening in many of our subjects that are taught in high school, and it's working its way down through, through middle school, junior high, into elementary. This whole discourse on racial division has been heated up to divide people even more. I want you to think, prior to 2008, just pause for a moment, prior to 2008, This country, in my opinion, was nowhere near as divided as it has become today. And let's be honest. In 2008, the United States elected a black president. 
and reelected him in 2012. And somehow this nation must be racist, yet we elected a black president twice. And this particular black president, in my opinion, did more in eight years to undo 150 years of racial progress and set us back literally to the 1920s instead of the 2020s. That, my friend, is a sad commentary. But then again, if you understand how the reprobate mind works, if you understand how evil works, it's called divide and conquer. Now, I've got another story that I want to share as we change topics. And this one, this one personally scares me. It frightens me, and it should frighten you as well. One of my good friends shared this story with me, and I'll give credit where credit is due. It comes out of the Federalist, and I read it. I've read it twice, and it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up every time I read it, because what we're about to read here, don't ever say when I say it's coming here and you say, oh, no, it it can't happen here. In time, you watch. Now, this one is a a case with global implications, and and I'm afraid it's going to creep into at least parts of the United States in a very rapid amount of time. There's a guy, and I'll see if I can get the name the the name pronounced correctly, and I'm sure that I'm going to destroy the pronunciation. Johanna Pojola, Johanna Pojola, wouldn't be cast to play his own part in Hollywood if Hollywood made a movie about this, this bishop, a religious figure, of course, being put on trial for his faith. Now, he is a, he's from Finland. He's a Finnish pastor. And he's now inherited a place in the church founded initially or credited to, I, I would explain, in the church that, you know, came after Martin Luther. And, and let's define, let me, let me just pause right here. When it comes to Lutheranism, there are some very conservative Bible-believing Lutherans around the world, and there are some that have gone completely bonkers, totally insane and unchristian. I mean, they have jettisoned the faith once delivered. They're making a mockery. They have a damnable heresy in what they're preaching in many churches, primarily in the United States. You'll find it in the ELCA, number of churches that have just basically spit on the Bible and in Christ's face. They have. They, they just reject it. They've, they've invented their own scripture, their own Bible, their own way of doing things. But let's just go back to Finland here. In this case, this particular bishop, he's 49 years old. He's forthright, but unassuming. He's gentle. Um, He's stereotypically of a a guy from Finland. He's thin and tall. He pauses while speaking carefully to consider the next words. He listens attentively to others with far less impressive resumes than his. In more than two decades as a pastor, he has ministered to congregations both tiny and larger. He has spent his entire adult life building a network of faithful Christian Bible-believing churches across Finland. Many of these little churches started with just a few people gathered for prayer and a Bible study and a hymn sing in people's homes and occasionally having communion when they could find an ordained pastor. In an in-person interview uh, with the Federalist, this bishop urged his fellow Christian leaders to be willing to seek out one lost sheep instead of the crowds and, and popular acclaim. This man appears to be the first person in post-Soviet you know, Union West to be brought up on criminal charges for preaching the Christian message, the same Christian message as established for 2,000 plus years. Also charged in the case that goes to trial next month is one of his fellow Lutheran pastors and also a Finnish member of parliament, 
Pavi Ransonen. Now, he's charged in a country that claims to guarantee. And I want you to think about this, just like the United States. Finland guarantees freedom of speech and expression and religion, okay? They guarantee freedom of speech and religion, okay? In, doesn't that sound like the United States? Doesn't it sound like England, Canada, Australia, New Zealand? Doesn't it sound like a lot of nations in Europe? Freedom of speech, freedom of politics, freedom of religion. So, what's his crime? What's his crime? He tweeted a picture of a Bible verse. Did you hear what I just said? He tweeted on Twitter a picture of a Bible verse. And the potential penalties for tweeting a picture of a Bible verse, if convicted, besides fines, could give them two years in prison. See, because the Finnish authorities, in spite of their constitution, has decided they're being charged with hate speech for respectively writing and publishing, in addition, a 24-page, back in 2004, by the way, booklet explaining what Christian theology regards towards sex and marriage, In other words, what is the Christian viewpoint for Christians? Let me clarify that. Let me say it again. What do Christians among themselves believe to be about sex and marriage? About marriage being for one man and one woman. The Finnish prosecutor claims the century-old Christian teachings about all of that are inciting hatred, and they violate legal preferences for the government privilege identity groups. Now, a writer, Rod Durham, uh, Dreyer, pointed out the witch hunt nature of the prosecution. See, this one individual that belongs in Parliament, also a Christian, wrote a pamphlet seven years ago before LGBTQ and they all the other dozen letters they keep adding with a plus sign was added to the national hate speech law as a protected class. And this individual was investigated once before for the pamphlet and cleared, but now they're going to undergo another interrogation. Now, the individuals have both animately affirmed the divinely given dignity value of all human rights, including all who identify with the LGBTQ whatever, whatever community, Christian theology does teach that all human beings are precious and are made in God's image and are offered either offered eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, in advance of all of this, the two individuals have been interrogated by the police for hours after hours about their theology. And the bishop said that he said his interrogation, uh, he was treated but these thoughts and beliefs are just pure crimes. In other words, the police are now the the ugly instrument of the state. And see, I think that's happened. It's happened in Australia when it comes to COVID. The police have turned into the Gestapo. They've turned into stormtroopers. They've turned into street fighting thugs. They're no longer police honoring individual freedom. They're thugs. They're reprobates. They're instruments of Satan himself with some of the nonsense the police are doing now to go after somebody for their religious belief in a country that guarantees freedom of religion. For the police to do that, they have they have given up on really being a true. They're not there to protect and serve. They're there to be instruments of fear and terror for government. I'm afraid that's coming to our country. We already know it's happened in Canada. We saw that pastor being arrested on a rainy day because he's violating COVID restrictions. How many people have gotten COVID in this church? <laughs> Look it up. Nobody. So the, these lockdowns and all this insanity is the reprobate mind at work. These are the delusional people. These are the ones that have just given their soul to Satan for their power. They hate God. They hate Christians. They hate people of freedom. It's all about control. You know, it's one this bishop said again, 
it's impossible for me to think that the classical Christian view and the doctrine of the majority of most denominations is becoming illegal. The question here is about the core of the Christian faith. How does a person get saved into unity with God and into everlasting life through the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Therefore, it is crucial to also talk about the nature of sin. Mm -hmm. We are living in now a democratic country in, in Finland. We must be able to disagree and express our disagreement. We have the right to be able to cope with speech that we feel insults our feelings. In other words, things that are said about Christians, that's okay. That kind of hate speech is encouraged. It is sanctioned. It is pushed in the media. It is pushed by those in leadership. Yet the things that Christians believe now is detestable to government. Because, see, Satan has worked his way in to the leadership positions of the world. He has found his way into the United States government, the Canadian government, the British government, the Australian government, New Zealand, all of it. Their governments are now filled with hellbound reprobates that hate God, hate the followers of God. They want to use you. They may claim to be members of, their, of some faith body, but they make a mockery of it in the way they live their lives. Look at Joe Biden, classic example, claims to be like Nancy Pelosi, a good Catholic, but rejects Catholic teaching consistently. What we're being demanded to to follow and believe in fin- in Finland, for example, you're seeing it happen all over the United States. It's happening in Canada. It's happening everywhere. And it will happen one state at a time in the United States. Mark my words. Mark my words words, one state at a time. It'll be a totalitarian system with only one correct view. And if Christians dare talk about Jesus Christ, if they dare talk about sin, if they dare talk about morality, they will be silenced. They will be fined. They'll be kicked off social media. And in some countries, and I'm afraid at some point it'll happen here, They'll end up in prison for their belief. Look, I know for some of you listening, it sounds like it'll never happen where I live. I live in South Carolina. I live in Georgia. I live in Alabama. I live in Tennessee. I live in Virginia. Don't count on it. You may be a last refuge, but the day is coming. Jesus told his disciples And he tells all Christians, look, Christianity was not the accepted in religion of the time of the disciples. In fact, it was blatantly illegal for Christians to share their faith could get them killed. And it did many a time. The martyrs, those that just lost their lives in the Colosseum, they became food for wild beasts just for the entertainment of the masses. St. Paul known as Saul, held the cloak of somebody who wanted to stone Stephen to death. Christians were hated and despised. Too many Christians today have it too easy here in the United States. They wouldn't know what to do with real persecution. They go to their happy church. They sing their happy hymns. And they give their happy $10 a week or whatever it is. And they come to church whenever it's convenient. I mean, let's not do church on Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, no. Let's not go to church on Christmas. It may get in the way of things. We have too many things going on. When push comes to shove, how many people are really, really willing to follow the cause of Christ? The church has always been a remnant. Many claim to be believers. Many are not. They can prove it by their own life. They're cultural Christians, and cultural Christians fold faster than a cheap suit. When it comes to standing up for what they believe, they can talk a good game among themselves, but will they talk that good game among non-believers? Of course not. They don't want to offend anybody. When I come back on the other side, we're going to continue with a few other stories that are on my mind and things that are really just, just getting under my skin and I think getting under a lot of yours as well. Would you let me know this month what stations you're listening to as we close out November and begin the month of December? 
I'm trying to, over the next two weeks, really determine the frequencies that are working best, the time of the day, maybe which times to expand in places where growth is possible, find out where things are not working as well. And of course, maybe you listen online, which would really be a blessing to me to know that you do. Maybe you listen as a podcast from one of the podcast sites. By the way, some of the places you may hear it as a podcast, you may hear a commercial. I have nothing to do with that. That's a something that they do to allow it on their platform. And I get nothing out of their commercials, by the way, just so you know. And I, I know that uh, I discovered that if you, uh, there are several ways to do it. If you ask, I think, uh, they say the Alexa devices, if you say, uh, play Truth Unashamed or something like that. I used that as a as another name one time for the possibility of a podcast and the two are tied together and the Alexa devices will play it. If you say open uh, the Truth Unashamed podcast, I think it might even work if you say open Truth to Ponder podcast, you might hear a commercial. Well, Jeff Bezo at Amazon makes that money. I get nothing. But at least the program is out there for others to hear. If you want to help us pay for the airtime bill, if you make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio, you can mail that to Truth to Ponder, 5753 Highway 85 North. 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's number 3248. And we are in Crestview. One word, Crestview, Florida, 32536. That's 32536. Once again, Truth to Ponder, make the check payable to Ancient Word Radio, 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248, Crestview, Florida, 32536. By the way, you can also support us from our website, which is truth, the number 2, ponder.com. That is truth, the number two, ponder.com. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Beerman. Every time you celebrate Christmas, you're actually celebrating Hanukkah. Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now, it's true. Every time you celebrate Christmas, you're really celebrating Hanukkah. You cannot celebrate Christmas without Hanukkah. See, about 130 years before the birth of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, a man named Antiochus Epiphanes, king of the Greeks, tried to wipe the Jewish faith off of the face of the earth. And he almost succeeded. And if he had succeeded, there'd be no Jewish fishermen in Galilee to become apostles. Think about it. There'd be no Jewish shepherds at night in Bethlehem. There'd be no Jewish carpenter in Nazareth and no Jewish virgin to rejoice in the Lord over the vision and the angel. But by a miracle of God, Antiochus and his armies were defeated. And the celebration of that miracle was called Hanukkah. So Jewish people around the world celebrate Hanukkah as they light the lights of the Hanukkah menorah. And Christians around the world celebrate the birth of Messiah with the lights of Christmas. But few people ever know that both holidays and both lights are intrinsically bound together. If it were not for Hanukkah, we'd have no Christmas. And likewise, if Messiah didn't have to be born according to the prophecies of the Hebrew prophets, we might not have Hanukkah. See, the lights of Hanukkah gave birth to the light of Christmas. So if you belong to Messiah, rejoice in your Jewish roots and give thanks to the Jewish people. Pray for them, bless them, and be glad in your heritage as a child of Abraham. And if you're Jewish, why not rejoice in the birth of Messiah, the greatest birthday party the world's ever known? And if you're a Christian, why not light a menorah this year and celebrate the festival of lights in the light of Messiah's glory? Want more? Ask for the Christmas Hanukkah Connection. Now the free gift for you. What if you discovered the place where the lost Ark of the Covenant was? Well, a newly revealed ancient discovery just as awesome. The mystery of the temple doors. You'll love it. It's our free gift to you. And Sapphire's daily spiritual vitamins guaranteed to revitalize your walk. Or free New Testament. How do you get all these free gifts? Easy. Just remember Jesus' Hebrew name, Yeshua, and dial it. That's it. It's so simple. Just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. Call now. 1-800-YESHUA-1. Now, the Jewish people brought you Hanukkah and the blessings of salvation. I invite you to join with me to bring it back to them, to bless those who blessed you. 
to and reach the unreached peoples from every nation. Just call now. 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Or write me direct, The Nice Jewish Boy, in Box 1111 in Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. It's a nice Jewish boy. It's box 1111 Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, until next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, Shalom Aleichem. Peace be to you, my friend, in Messiah or HaOlam, the light of the world. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our Monday edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Got a couple of other stories that I've been looking at. And I'll talk more about the COVID stuff tomorrow. I've got a few stories that I'm saving, but I think some of what I've got here in front of me is something you really need to hear and make plans accordingly with some of this material. We truly live in a very different time. As I, as you can see in the first part of the program, the stupidity about math being racist, uh, some countries now considering what is said in the Bible as, as inciting hate speech. And so many people that I know would say, oh, Bob, it can't happen here. What do you mean? It, how, how dare you say something like that could happen here in, in the United States? Well, look at some of the stuff that we're dealing with now that would have been unbelievable just 10, 15 years ago. And incrementally over time, a lot of your rights may very easily disappear. Go back two years ago, 2019. Let's go back to November, end of November 2019. I was making plans for some church planning and other things. I never was dreaming about doing a daily radio show. That was the last thing on my mind. I had a deeper concern in my heart and my mind about it's time to plant some more churches that are Bible-believing. They may not be large churches, it doesn't matter, but they're the ones that God wants planted. And, And we thought about getting into that in the spring of 2020. Well, you know what happened. Instead of the spring of 2020 being a time to plant a church, I found myself in another state helping with the early response to this unknown pandemic. And what I learned during that time is one of the reasons I'm doing this radio program today. Things that I learned firsthand. And it became increasingly evident that we're being scammed. And we'll get into that tomorrow. But a lot of things have happened because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Governments have gone literally insane. They have become totalitarian, authoritarian. There was this one senator in Ireland. Don't have his name in front of me, but I saw the video and it was alarming. You know, he's going, I don't think that anybody that doesn't get the vaccine, they should not even be allowed to buy food. Let them starve until they get their vaccination. That's a senator in, in of all places, Ireland. If you don't get your vaccine, you should not be allowed to eat. You should suffer and, and die because you're not vaccinated. You have this one guy in Australia just screaming in his part of the world that, that he wanted to put people that were that came within right now in parts of Australia especially in the Aboriginal region. If, if you get near somebody that tested positive, now remember, there could be up to a 97% false positive rate depending upon the cycle threshold. So all you do is just up the cycle threshold, which has been done. Trust me, it has been done. Run the scary numbers up. And so all of a sudden, you're minding your own business. And and somehow you come within so many feet of somebody that tested positive. They want to put you in a quarantine camp, rip you out of your home at gunpoint with police and take you to a COVID camp where you must remain 
for 10 days minimum to make sure that you don't test positive and you have no symptoms before you're released. COVID concentration camps, that's what we're going to come down to. And it's going to happen in other parts of the world. I don't understand why Australia, a country with their heritage and their free spirit, has become so dominated and so delusional over COVID-19. I'm looking at the numbers, and of course, they're all, they're all, they, they look like they're under hypnosis. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. You must have the vaccine or we're going to die. It's like, please, Bob, take an aspirin. I've got a headache and you, I, you, my, my aspirin won't work unless you take yours. It makes, I mean, th- there's no common sense to any of this. And the narrative, by the way, and I'll talk about this more tomorrow, is rapidly falling apart in the most vaccinated countries in the world. The narrative is falling apart. But see, the reprobate mind can't see truth. It only wants to believe further the lie, even when it becomes to the point of insane and ridiculous. That's what's happening in our world today. But we have another problem, and it's, it's happening here in the United States. It's a global problem. There's a labor shortage. Yeah, a lot of people decided to just leave the labor force and never come back. I mean, they just picked up and left. They're not there anymore. There are a lot of people that don't want to work. Um, Some people are using COVID as their excuse. And it's forcing, in many places, restaurants to permanently close, schools to cancel classes. And airline schedules are all, all, all fouled up. And the supply chain and fueling the supply chain breakdowns with absent truckers because of stupidity of governors like Gavin Newsom in California. You know, your truck must be newer than this. Get an electric truck. (laughs) That's one of the dumbest things I've heard yet. We're not ready in our grid system to be able to provide millions of watts of power to to overland trucks. I know there's a company that's going to make them next year. Maybe sell a couple. We'll see. But this scarcity of United States workers in the wake of COVID-19 is causing some employers to raise wages, others to give employers even a greater say in the daily operations. But businesses are still struggling to retain workers and schools nationwide are canceling classes on short notice due to a lack of teachers. Now, that could be a good thing when it comes to the public schools. Maybe they all should resign. Maybe they all should just go home, like the, especially the ones in California that teach that math is racist. You know, a record 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs back in September. That's right. They simply quit, walked away surpassing the previous high set in August, the month before. And here's the problem with the shortage. This could last for years. I mean, this is not going to get better anytime soon. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And then couple with that, the, the people that are, that are just afraid of, of COVID, they run around with their face masks that do nothing, but they believe the magic mask will save them. They believe that stick in the arm. And maybe I'll get two or three, four boosters down the road. And yeah, I'll be COVID proof someday. It's not working. The numbers are beginning to come out in other parts of the world. And it is not a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Sorry, Joe Biden, you were wrong, as usual. You've been wrong on most everything. And you're wrong on that one, too. Although job openings abound, there were still 7.4 million people out of work in October. September's uh, quitting rate rose uh, to 3% from a high of 2.9 the month before. Worker burnout is rated as as one of the reasons in fields like health care that have been hard hit. And see, with the vaccine mandate in health care, a surprising number, they don't like to talk about this, of people have decided, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not taking this stuff. I went through this for over a year on the front line. Many came down with COVID and recovered. 
They have wonderful natural immunity. They don't want to damage or risk damaging by taking these insane, worthless shots that may cause blood clots. You know, I mean, look, we're seeing soccer players, you know, falling over dead and having heart issues at a rate unprecedented in history. We never used to have stories of dozens and dozens of soccer players having heart attacks and and many dying. How often? We never heard of this kind of stuff, but we are now. So many in the healthcare field, they're not doing it no more. And they're not if they're living in a place like uh, if they're working for companies that are mandating it or they or they you get fired. Many are choosing to get fired or just walk away. They're not going to do it. I don't blame them. And at some point, maybe some of these in the United States, healthcare places will get the message and look at the data and find out how stupid and idiotic and unscientific and illogical they've been about this pandemic from day one. I still am angered about hospitals and Doctors that refuse to use workable therapeutics that we know without a doubt work. The evidence is extremely undeniable that they work. But no, we talk about wait till your lips turn blue, then maybe come back and we'll, t- we'll, we'll treat you by observing you and then we'll ventilate you and then we'll bury you. And then we'll collect lots of federal money because you died of COVID. Lots of federal money. Lots and lots of federal money. That's what it comes down to. I mentioned last week, two people I know, one who was to know of, one is a good friend who came down with COVID, about my age, went to a doctor that was able to properly treat with the known therapeutics, and he recovered rapidly from a very quickly worsening case. And then another individual that went the hospital route, he's dead. Because, see, they wouldn't treat him that way. Even when they tried to sue the hospital, get lawyers involved, they fought back. And by the time anything could be done, he was dead. So I consider that murder, in my opinion. That's that's willful homicide. Denying people treatment. Now, thank the Lord I live in Florida. Somebody else I know was in a hospital and was not getting the proper treatment. And they were taken out of that hospital and was treated and now they're home and recovering. It's going to be a long recovery because it took a long time. But see, this is the insanity. We have a reprobate president, a president who is unfit for office, unfit, mentally unfit, morally unfit, spiritually unfit, politically unfit, criminally unfit in office. We have a crook in office now. He's made millions from his being in office. He's got a son that has now cornered the market on, on the precious metals that will be needed for batteries for our, these electric cars. I like how Joe Biden said the other day. By the way, I'm, I'm, I hate to deviate here, but real quick. As he drives around on a $110,000 electric car, he said, if you don't like the gas prices, buy an electric car. <laughs> if you can't afford the gas prices, who has a spare $110,000 floating around to buy the vehicle you were tooling around in in Detroit? Yeah, let him eat cake. Wasn't that the line that was supposedly said by, by what's her name in France? Let them eat cake. There's no bread. Let them eat cake. That's Joe Biden. You can't afford gas? Buy a six-figure electric car. Then you won't have to worry about gas prices. But you'll eventually have to worry about the electricity cost on a failing system that can't power all these cars. I guess we'll put windmills in the top of our, our, our all of our cars now. Maybe, maybe some solar panels. You know, I'm trying to think of how many hundreds of square feet it would take to make solar panels sufficient to charge your car in less than 24 hours. It may take up your backyard. It's going to take a lot. You need like a 100 amp service or something to to, 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 to to charge some of these things. Electricity's not free if you didn't notice. Well, getting back to the problem with the labor shortage. It's one of these strange occurrences that are that, that have been brought on by these weird events. That's all we can we can say. And this from a guy named Robert Bruno, director of uh, labor education at the University of Illinois. He said, I don't refer to it as a resignation. It's just the refusal to accept the conditions that they've been working under. Now, many Republican and many business leaders have blamed the expanding unemployment benefits during the worst 
of the pandemic lockdown. And that's true. A lot of people got a lot of extra money and they've been extending it in many places. So if you make almost as much money staying at home watching TV, why go to work? Why risk getting COVID? Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know, here's the problem. Here's the problem, as I said. A lot of people have decided, especially in 26 different states that have, there are 26 states that have opted out now of the expanded benefits, but that means there's 24 that are still doing it. And that's where you find even the worst problems, where the extra money is still running around. Food service people, 860,000 quit. Retail, 685,000 walked off their jobs. Hospitality, almost a million. Healthcare, half a million workers, way over a half a million have quit. Don't think that's not going to make a dent when you try to get health care. Th- I'm thankful I live in Florida where we have a governor that is fighting for us and trying to uh, tell the Biden administration, we don't believe in your mandates. 900 school districts around the country, mostly in blue states, have canceled classes abruptly in the past months. Staff burnout. What do you mean burnout? You didn't go to, you didn't have to work last year. What what burnout are you getting in schools? Come on. Nobody was showing up online. You had it made. I don't want to hear about burnout with teachers. You know, you've you've had it pretty easy in many cases. All these additional uh, unscheduled days off. Parents are scrambling to find options for caring for their kids during the workday. And amid all this mess in the workforce, wages are actually rising. But workers are losing ground because of inflation. Uh, Yep. Thank you, Biden inflation and, and, and call it Trudeau inflation up there in, you know, just inflation is what they're calling it in Canada now. Bad government policies are running the prices up because of stupid policies and decisions by reprobate idiots in charge. I'm sorry, the United States, we have an idiot running our government that has no comprehension of what he's doing. And the people he's surrounded himself with are the worst and most evil people that our government has ever had in charge. And I I wonder if it gets worse, we may turn into an Australia where they just send the police out, you know, with their jack footed, you know, boots and and batons to beat up people that don't want to get vaccinated or or live in their house. Ever notice, that's something else. You must stay home and in your homes. Well, vitamin D wards off infection. You get that from sunlight. No, 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 you got to stay indoors. And now you got these idiots in California in one county, wear a face mask in your own home <laughs> and stay out of the sun. For We can't have you getting better. I'm telling you, we are in deep trouble in this country. I didn't expect to go too long on that, but I did. And I'm going to just quickly get into something else. You know, I, I feel this need, this, this need to get back into some of the ministry that I was involved with before. But I also have this radio program. But I know a lot of people that I'm talking to. We need to pull some resources. We really do. I've got somebody I'm going to try to talk to maybe sometime later this week. Um, even though I'm busy working on another project, I've got to make the time. I, I need people that can, that God is calling to do something like what I'm doing, that can help out with what I'm trying to do. Um, there, I'm trying to launch a different uh, website for Christian music and teaching and other things that you can find while the web is still available to us. Why not use it? But time is is my enemy, at, you know, because I have so many things I'm trying to get done in a short amount of time. And I believe we're going to be coming into this window of opportunity. And I pray that I'm able to get it all done. I need your prayers, really, more than anything right now, to be able to have the discernment. I've got somebody I'm trying to help in their ministry, another one that's in a pastoral ministry that he needs to relaunch. I have others that are trying to build media ministries. I'm trying to also seek God's guidance on this one, truth to ponder, and how best to perform and do it on a daily basis. It takes a lot of time. And and I want to I want to do it right. I want to be honor I want to honor what God has given me in this work. Would you pray for this ministry? 
We have so many opportunities. I don't want to miss them. Um, I really don't. God has been good. Uh, You've been wonderful. We're coming into the month of December able to meet our bills again. And I'm just wanting to be a good steward where God is going to open some doors. And those doors are going to be opening very, very soon, partially in December and into January, both in this radio program and other ministries that God has called me to do. I'm ordained clergy. I need to be spending some time building churches beyond just this radio program. I hope you understand that. It all made a lot of sense during the time of COVID to be just producing the radio program for now. But things are changing, and I believe there's a window of opportunity coming. You know, we we talk, and I'll, I'll share it again tomorrow, I'm sure. We talk about opportunity in windows, and a lot of people keep saying in the United States, oh, wait till 2022, we'll fix it at the ballot box. Well, you may fix a few things. You may gain a little time, but you're not really going to fix it in the long run. The ballot box is just a small piece of the puzzle. I've been saying, and I said it last week, since 1972, I've been voting. And I've been waiting to fix it all, the ballot box, for 51 years. And it's, it's not fixed yet. Uh, We keep being promised it'll get fixed, and then it gets fixed for a little while, and it falls apart again. So the ballot box is not your long-term solution. Besides, in these 50-some-odd years of trying to fix it at the ballot box, we have lost freedom. We have lost integrity. We have lost a lot in this country. We have fallen deeply. And I think we are coming increasingly under God's judgment. So don't tell me we're going to fix it at the ballot box. You're foolish to think that. We still vote, yes, but that is not the fix. The fix is changing people's lives with the good news of the gospel. And that's where we as the church are failing. We're not doing a good job at that. We're keeping inside of our four walls or whatever. The early church grew by taking the chance of sharing the message even when it was not popular, and even if that message could get you killed. You know, the day is going to come when these reprobate people that think they're Christians that are not, in some of these woke churches that have adopted a social gospel and rejected the true gospel, will think that your death or your your being put in prison is doing God's service. Well, the evil God they serve, yeah. That day is here, and it's come rapidly. There's a lot we need to talk about, man. So I just got into, I didn't realize I'd go this way today, but I've got some papers on my desk. We'll get back to this tomorrow. If you if you believe in this ministry, I really, I need you to pray for us. I need to know what station you're listening to. If you're listening on shortwave, this month of December, I want to kind of tidy up where people listen and figure what needs to be added, deleted, changed, adapted a little bit, maybe move some things around after the first of the year. We have some additional airtime probably coming our way in a project I'm on, and we're hoping to get it done sooner than later. Boy, I need your your prayers for strength in, in what I'm doing. It's taking a big toll on me physically, but we're getting it done. And it's hard sometimes to get the radio show done too, so pray for me. If you believe in us and can support us, make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. That's our parent. And and mail it to Truth to Ponder, 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's Truth to Ponder, 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. 5753 Highway 85 North, number 3248. We are in Crestview, Florida. Crestview 32536. That's 32536. And make the check payable to Ancient Word Radio. By the way, you can also support us from the website, which is truth, the number two ponder.com. Until tomorrow, may God richly bless you, is my prayer. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.